Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're gonna talk about how to glitch paths using expressions. So I was talking to Mikey Borup, shout out brother, about doing some path expressions, and he was working on something that actually inspired me to do something else, and so this is what became of it. So the first thing, I just grabbed some paths from some text, Unfortunately, we don't have a way to do any kind of live text paths. I really wish we did. Hopefully that's coming, I don't know, but that would be excellent. So I started to mess around with the paths in an expression, and basically I just took all the points that were available and started to move them around randomly, and we got this kind of weird thing. That was just kind of the first step in the research on this tutorial. So in this next one, I took the original path, and I made points along the whole path at a regular interval, according to this resolution slider. So there's 40 points around here because we're using the point on path method. It basically gives you back x, y coordinates for points on a path at specific percentages. So in this case, I sorted them so that every other one was first. So it really messes up the shape and gives you like these crazy lines. I have some motion blur on this for something a little bit later, but this is kind of what it looked like to begin with. So if that's what you're going for, you're done. But otherwise, let's press on. So this third one is basically a combination of the first two methods. I drew a new path with dots at regular intervals along the original path, and then I just moved them randomly, like in the first example. So we get this weird thing. And so in the next one, it's basically the same thing, except for instead of moving in X and Y, we just move our points in X. So you get almost like this VHS kind of effect. So then I continued on, and then I started making things like blocks instead. So that ends up giving you something like this, which is a little more kind of a standard kind of glitch. And we'll look at the expression on this one, which is basically the same thing, just with a little bit different timing. As you can see in this one, the glitches hold an extra frame or two so that you can actually see it a little bit better. I don't know why that keeps popping out like that, but whatever. Anyway, let's open up this path into Expressionist. I know we've got our cool new panel in this version of AE, but it's really tiny, so you still can't see it. And also it has to live down here, which is less than ideal. So most of these things are set up similarly. They basically just vary in how the points are added to the create path at the end. As always, the project file is available on our website for a dollar. It includes all the research and development code that I did for this. It also includes some of the graphics that I used in the actual end screen and thumbnails and stuff for YouTube. So you can check that out. So first thing to note, this one doesn't use any tangents. So when this thing glitches, they become slightly blocky depending on how you have this resolution set. We're at 80, so we have a pretty high resolution. As you can see, there's a lot of dots on this. So there's not gonna be too much of that. So the first thing we do is we grab the path that we have in each one of these letters. And unfortunately, because we don't have live text or anything like that, we, or any real easy way to sample a bunch of these paths and put them into one kind of path layer thing, we have to add this to every letter, which kind of sucks. But if you have Expressionist or if you're using Quiver, you can select all these paths and just add it all at once. So again, we're setting a variable for original path, and we're going to add into that this property, which is the path itself. Then we're going to grab our frequency slider, and because of the way we're going to test this, we're going to divide it by 100. So basically, the frequency slider is a percentage. Then we're going to have a seed so you can change how this glitch looks. So that's over here, a seed slider. Right now, it's just set to 90. And then we have seed equals seed plus math dot floor of time times 15. This actually could be plus equals, but anyway. So in this case, time is a small number. It becomes 1 at our frame rate, which is 24 frames. So it's going to be less than 1 for that duration. But I want it to be a little bit faster, so we're going to multiply it by 15, and then we're going to floor it, which basically is going to drop off the decimal point. So that means that this has to actually jump to another integer before the seed will change. That happens about every two to three frames, depending on where we are in the animation. So these glitches are going to hold for two to three frames, because we're going to use this timeless property of seed random. So timeless means that basically when we pull a random value, until the seed changes, the random value that we get will be the same, because it's kind of tied to the seed that we have. So the next thing we're going to check to see if our random value that we're going to generate is less than our frequency. Because I don't want to evaluate all of this stuff every frame. I don't want this to constantly be glitching, basically. So we're going to use this frequency value as kind of a threshold. So if this random number is less than our frequency, then we'll go through this whole glitch process. Having it be less than, in this case, ensures that as our frequency is higher, it's more likely that random is less than frequency. Random without any values in here, too, by the way, is a number from 0 to 1. It's a floating point number. So if we're not going to go through this whole glitch process, we basically stop doing all of this other expression stuff that we don't need to run, and we just pass it the original path again. So we get our unadulterated text. 
But if we're going to screw this stuff up, let's go and do it. So we're going to grab a res variable. So that's sort of resolution. That's going to come from this slider. And then these are all the same kind of deal. We're going to grab amp, which is amplitude over here. We're going to grab amount, which is our glitch amount. We're going to set up an empty array called points. And then we're going to set up a variable called skip, which is going to be one divided by res. This skip is going to be basically like a multiplication factor in the next couple of lines. And that's basically going to be the distance between each point. So this res basically is our denominator in this thing. So as it gets bigger, the skip percentage is going to be a little bit smaller. Anyway, we're going to go through a for loop. We're going to set up variable i equal to zero. And while i is less than res, so while we haven't made enough points to make our resolution yet, we're going to do i plus plus. And during that time period, we're going to do points dot push. And then we're going to take the original path and we're going to do point on path i times skip. So this value that point on path takes is a percentage. So the percentage of the path. So it's going to give us back this xy point, which we're going to push into this points array. Push just appends something to an array. So basically this i times skip is going to be that skip gap multiplied by whatever number we're on. So in this case, since we're at 80 resolution, skip is 0.125. So at zero, it's going to be zero. At one, it's going to be 0.125. And it's going to be 0 0.250 and so on until we get around the entire path. Now, if you're thinking about this, this is not going to end up being 100. So now, why are we dividing by 1 instead of 100? That's because the percentage that this thing takes isn't from 0 to 100. It's from 0 to 1. And a side benefit of the way this thing is actually set up is that you can actually go more than 100 points because this is being divided. So really, the gap just gets smaller and smaller the more points you add. So that builds that whole path. Then in the next section, we have another for loop. And this one basically sets up a variable that we're going to check to see if it's less than the amount, so glitch amount. So in this case, it's four. So when we glitch, we're going to end up with four glitches per character. And so we're going to use var j to be the point that we're going to select out of this points array. And we need that to be an integer. So we're going to select a random number between one and the total resolution minus two. And the reason that we're going to go for negative two and not the full amount of points here, and we're starting at one and not zero, is because we're going to take points on either side of this actual point to build our boxes. So I did this to make sure we didn't have to do any extra checks to make sure that we're not going to go past and try to select more points than we have. So then we're going to set up a variable for x, and it's going to be random from negative amplitude to amplitude. So we can go either way up to that amplitude amount that we have up here, which is 100 currently. So in the next line, we're going to take our random point, which is j, and we're going to set that point equal to its current x value plus this random amount, and then its y value is going to be the previous point's y value. So basically, as we go around this line, we take a point, we push it over, but we want it to be at the same y point as the previous one, because otherwise we get a diagonal line. And then we're going to take the next point, and we're going to use its current x value, add that same x value, so both the first and the second point will be pushed out, and then its y value will be the next point's y value. So if I zoom in on our comp, you can see that this point is the one that we've bumped over, and it's using the y value from this point. And then this is the next point that we've bumped over, and it's using the y value from this point. Let's go back. So we do that the amount number of times, and then we pass in that new points array into create paths, and that gives us our glitched version of the text. So I'm not gonna go super in depth into how the rest of these are built because pretty much the code is pretty similar. The only real difference is how the paths are built in the end. So if you really need more information about that, a lot of this code is actually up on the website, and there's a little bit more explanation to it there. All right, so let's check the next one. Let's pull this path up into here, this path expression. So you can see this one has a little bit different thing at the top. So this function is on the top now because in the new After Effects JavaScript engine, the last line has to evaluate to something. So now functions can't go at the bottom anymore. So this is very similar to the previous one. We're calling this thing build block. We're going to pass it an A point and a B point. We're going to set our X variable to be another random number between negative amp and amp, just like before. We're going to set up a new small little array for block. We're first going to push the first point in, just straight up. Then we're going to add in a new point that uses the same x value as the original a point added with that offset x value up here. And then we're going to take its original y value. And then the next point that we're going to push in is going to be the b point's x value plus the offset. So basically, again, you get our rectangle. And it's going to use its original y. And then we're going to pass in b again. So basically, we're going to pass an a value, an a offset by x a B offset by X, and then a B value. Then we're going to return that block array. So after that, it's basically the same thing in here, grabbing in all our slider values. In this case, we grab in our points array, and we're actually going to grab all the points 
We're going to grab in all the intangents of the original path and the outtangents of the original path so that we keep all the curves and everything. The same skip thing set up here. In this one, our seed random isn't timeless, so it jumps every frame, so the glitches are a little faster. We do our same check to see if we're going to glitch, and otherwise we pass the original path. And if you want this to be a little bit faster, you could put this in here. I'll fix that code in the website. I didn't do that here because I was working kind of quickly when I did all this. So I kind of missed that when I was optimizing things. You want to do as little checking as possible if you don't have to do it. But anyway, we go back through here. So for our glitches, we're going to pick a random point. And since this random is going to be from 0 to 1, that's going to be our percentage on the path. Because remember, it takes a number from 0 to 1 for its percentage. So we're going to set up that point A equal to that, basically that percentage that we just picked, minus 0 0.01 and B is going to be the same percentage plus 0 0.01. So instead of sending that actual point, we're going to send a point that's just a little bit behind and just a little bit ahead of it. And then in the next line, we're going to take that points array, and to that, we're going to concatenate what is returned from the build block function. So we're going to pass to build block that A and B point, and it's going to return to us that block array, and then that gets appended to the end of points. So now our intangents and outtangents won't match up. We need to have the same amount of points. So we run through a quick loop right here where we push in four points at zero, zero into intangents and four points at zero, zero to out tangents. Tangents are relative to the parent, so pushing in zero, zero means there really are no tangents. So these are just perfect rectangles. After that, into our create paths, the only difference is that we're going to pass points, then intangents and out tangents. And that's it for that one. That guy looks like this, and I've added a motion blur to this one as well. And we will see very shortly what that looks like, because that was something I was screwing around with because I wasn't really a huge fan of what this one actually looked like. But if you put it into here and you run a little bit of a tint and a find edges or find edges and a tint on this thing, you get this kind of interesting geometric pattern on top of everything. It's kind of cool. I thought that was neat. Same thing happens with uh, the number two one. This one's a little bit more dense. You can see that if you restrict it to its original alpha, you get kind of an interesting, almost like uh, take on me, aha, kind of weird, you know, thing. So I think the original 05 here probably is the nicest looking one out of all of these, 05B. But I continued because what kind of bothered me is that some of these things get a little weird because we kind of lose the curves as we go around. And so I wanted to add those back in. So basically, 7 is kind of a combination of 5 and 6 a little bit. So let's grab this guy into here. We'll see how it changes. But we have the same build block function up here. We have basically the same controls. The main difference here is that in our points array, we're not grabbing points. We're just setting up a blank array. Same thing for intangents and outtangents. Our skip is the same way. In this case, I'm using this glitches here as a counter. So that's why it's set to zero. So basically, as we get to our amount and our glitches here, we're going to increment this each time through this loop. And you'll see how that works in a minute. But once this hits a certain number, we're not going to glitch anymore. And again, we're setting up our seed the same way as we did before, so that it only changes every once in a while, so our random values will hold for a little bit. So you can see, basically, we have the same thing set up with our regular frequency thing to check to see if we're going to actually glitch or not. And then we're going to build our points again using that resolution setup. But as we're going to go through this, we're going to check to see if we're going to glitch. Later on, I changed this to a slider so that you can actually control it. Because what happens is if this is a little too frequent, all your glitches happen at the beginning of your path, and they don't make it all the way through. So I set up a slider for this value right here, this 0.5 later on, so you can kind of tweak that. But anyway, we're going to check to see if our random value that we're going to generate is greater than 0.5 and if our glitches are less than amount. So if we still have glitches left that we're going to glitch on and glitch and glitch and glitch, then we're going to glitch. You can see I also brought in this size variable up here and it's multiplied by 0.01. So this is basically the same thing as taking that point from before and picking a point just slightly behind and just slightly ahead of it. Same thing set up here, A and B, same way. We're going to concatenate that to our points array. But now we don't have all of the original points in there. So this is basically going to build as we build around all of our points because we're going through our res setup, remember? So basically, as this goes around, if we glitch, we're going to add a block. And then we're going to keep going around. And then if we glitch again, we're out of block. And every time we add one of those blocks in, and I, and I could have done this, I guess, differently in that function maybe or something. But every time we do that, we loop through and we add four blank tangents so that we have a perfect rectangle. And once we're done with that, we know we glitched. We're going to add one to the glitches counter, and then we continue on. So basically here, if we don't glitch, we basically just add the point that we would have added along the way. We add its actual tangent. And in this case, I multiplied that by 10, because I believe these are actually uh, like normalized. And I wasn't getting a good enough curve, so I multiplied it by 10. Turns out that when you use tangent on path, no, that's what we're doing here. I guess the inverse is actually the intangent. So we get that tangent. 
at that percentage and multiply it by negative one. This is a vector, so that multiplies everything in it by negative one. So we get our intangent, and then out tangent is just the tangent. So our points array gets its point, our intangents array gets its point, and our out tangents array gets its point. And we continue through until we've built the letter, and then we pass create path points, intangents, and out tangents, just like we did before. And then we end up with our glitchy letters, which look like this, which is not a bad way to do it. I kind of just like the other one because it's a little more blocky for some reason, but I had to try this just to see if it would work out a little bit better. What's also interesting about this is that you can still use like shape layer effects. So you can like blob things together. This one's using offset paths, one that goes one way and it's set to use a round join, I think, or whatever. And then another one's set to the negative value of that. So it brings it back in. So you end up with these like blobby things. We did a tutorial on that a while ago. Uh, I will link that so you can see that this is kind of weird. It's kind of like Swiss cheese. I don't know what you use that for, but that's interesting. And since people always ask, here is our uh, you know example. It's basically the same thing as uh, the one that we just looked at. One of them has a little bit of a block dissolve on it. I built it out of three different versions just so I can get the kind of glitch the way I want it in the still frame. I put over some noise and different things that we've made in previous tutorials, and I've added a light glow, and that's pretty much that. But you can and should experiment and build your own thing. Anyway, that's it. I hope you guys find something cool to use this on. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you like this video, make sure to subscribe because we do one every week. If you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com workbench. And make sure to keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. I recently revised an After Effects script that comes native with it. That actually makes it a little bit more useful, and I'm going to put that out for free soon. So make sure to check that out. Anyway, as always, I am Joe, and we'll see you next week. Bye.